What's up YouTube, I'm Mike, and today I'm gonna to shoot a quick video to uh, finally break down this TRT with Trend Cruise uh, for the final time. So uh, this cruise has been going on for eight or nine weeks now. Um, if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, I'll put a link at the very end of this video on the, uh, you know, over my face so that you can go back to the beginning and understand exactly what we're dealing with. So um, if you've been following along since then, you'll know that the final two pieces of the puzzle that I was looking to solve with cruising on 50 milligrams of Trin and 200 milligrams of Test E was to see if all of my biomarkers would return to normal. As of the last video that I shot, the, the outliers were still my lipids and my blood pressure. I'm very happy to report that my, my lipids have now fully come back into line. They're still uh, you know, closer to the top at about 180 with HDL of course being on the low end, but they're back within the normal range. And as I said in the previous video, everything is continuing to trend down. So I suggest, I suspect that if I was able to, uh, if I continue to cruise on this dose for three or four more weeks, that we would see an even further reduction in the uh, LDL, we would see improvement of the liver, of the lipid function or the lipid levels. So very, very happy to see that because that was one of the two things that was really concerning me about my health and potential longevity, blasting the kinds of compounds that I've been blasting. Not to mention the fact that you guys know how much I love Trin and have been desperate to find a way to incorporate that into my cruises. The last piece before I kind of summarize everything is my blood pressure. On blast, my blood pressure gets as high as 160 over 80 or 90. And it really doesn't make you feel good. For those of you who have never experienced high blood pressure, um, it doesn't feel great. For, for me, the most notable effect is that I'm just chronically out of breath. So when I go to the gym and lift, I find that I'm panting, I, I'm, bre I'm mouth breathing a lot more, a lot sooner than I would have been otherwise. And just walking around the house, you get winded. I can be laying in bed for two hours, just totally chilling and relaxed and talking to my wife. And be totally out of breath. And so that's frustrating when you're, you're, you become a mouth breather, you, you just can't really catch your breath. I have one of those pulse oxes, and my, my oxygen saturation is always good, it's just labored breathing is required to get it there. So um, uh, my blood pressure has, has come down from as high as 160, and I'm down to the high 120s all the way up to 130. Another thing that I did is I got a new blood pressure monitor. The blood pressure monitor that I was using was a cheap one with the arm cuff that was really too small and I would get these massively erratic readings. 150, 160, 130, it's just all over the fucking map and there was no way to trust it. So I got a more expensive, better wrist um, monitor and that has provided very, very consistent readings. One of the things that is slightly um, concerning, however, is that um, it tells you to read your blood pressure on your left wrist, which I do um, almost exclusively, but if I read it on my right wrist, it will come back with a reading some of, of a, a, usually about 20 points higher. I tested it on my wife. She had the same issue except her variance was only about 15 points. If you look that up on Google, it tells you that having uh, uh, more than 10 millimeters of mercury difference between your left and your right arm can be indicative of a blood clot somewhere on your the right side of your body in your right arm. I'm hoping that's not the case because it's happening to my wife too and there's she's never had her cholesterol aligned. So I'm thinking it's a function of the machine, but it's worth mentioning just for transparency's sake, I can have a 130 reading on the left and still have a 150 reading on the right. So take that, as, you know, take that in consideration. But um, overall, my blood pressure, at least on the left, is down into very nearly the, the normal range. Not perfectly normal. I had to, I, I, I've been taking 80 milligrams of telmasartan and uh, it hasn't been even four weeks yet. So I'm hoping that that dose will continue to bring the, bring the blood pressure down. I've been struggling with blood pressure for about the last year. It doesn't seem to just be caused by blasting. It may be something that's going on just um, separate from the hormones. Although if I ever stay on just TRT for any length of time, it does tend to creep back down in that 120 range. So, you know, 
who knows, probably to do with the hormones. So lipids are back in line, blood pressure is back effectively in line. The, the, the monitor continues to tell me my blood pressure is normal as long as it's under 131 and I'm feeling substantially better. Um, as to one of the other changes that you might be noticing, and that is my haircut. I love to come on these videos that I make and tell all you guys how I was right when somebody else was wrong and you know, it's a whole big I told you so kind of scenario. Well, this time I gotta be honest, I'm having to eat my words in a major way. I made a video some time ago talking about hair loss and how I didn't understand these guys that go through all the trouble trying to salvage their fucking hair. I said when I got to that point, I would just fucking take it down and not give two shits about it. Well, I did that about a week ago. I started becoming very bothered by the, the bald spot that I'm getting. It's, it's not really a bald spot, but it's just the hair is much thinner back here on the top than it is in the front and the sides. And it was noticeable in a video that I shot when I was looking down and it just got under my skin. I couldn't fucking take it. So I went in the bathroom and I just took it down with a bare guard and almost immediately regretted it. <laughs> it's not the end of the world. It's not the most horrible look I've ever seen, but it, it certainly made me wish that I had done more to salvage my hair. I say that, but I'm not gonna stop blasting and cruising hair damaging compounds. And I'm probably not going to take the shampoos. So I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm shooting for some kind of middle ground. I'm gonna let it grow in thick again, thicker, and try to find some middle ground between too short and too long that it's, it's really obvious. But um, yeah, I was definitely wrong about that. And um, I don't know, like I know that the, you know, a lot of guys have been telling me, man, save your hair, try the minoxidil, the finasteride, all that shit. My wife was definitely right. Uh, she said, you gotta salvage it as long as you can. You're not gonna look the same without it. And so I'm here to report all you guys were right. My wife was right. I should have done more when I had the chance. Maybe I'll, I'll jump for the fucking shampoo, but I don't know. I just, I, I haven't seen enough data that, to suggest it's really gonna help that much when I continue using fucking Trend and Masteron and all these compounds that we know are fucking not hair safe. So um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens, but that is the reason for the very low cut. So I was definitely wrong about that. So uh, the reason I've been making videos uh, for, the, for the past little while is just because I decided to take a week off from the gym. I was, oh, that brings me to one other thing. The, the other part of my cruise that I wanted to mention is I had a lot of guys in, in some of the DMs, the comments on some of my videos reaching out to me on Instagram saying, Mike, you know, your cruise seems to be going so great you're maintaining your strength, you're maintaining your sexual aggression, your endurance, like you're getting everything you want from the, from the low dose trend, why ever blast again? And the answer that I kept giving them was, yeah, I'm, I'm having a lot of positive effects from this dose, but I'm not growing. And obviously I want to get bigger. Well, I'm happy to report that over the last, I, I started growing again a couple of weeks ago, I started this cruise at 183 in the morning and my weight is back up to 191 in the morning. So a solid little bit of growth there while maintaining six pack abs. I made, I made a video recently, a few weeks ago that, that I had a body scan. My body fat percentage was at 9.4 with six very visible abs. That was, that was weighing about 185 in the morning. I'm down up to, I'm up to 191 and I still have six very visible abs. The caveat to that and why I'm not ready to say that I'm just gonna keep growing on, on fucking TRT plus trend is because um, the, that 183 was, was basically an artificially low weight. So my, the, the most I've ever weighed was 202 and that was pretty fluffy. Like you could see the top two abs but the bottom ones were gone. Then I got COVID at the end of my last blast and it, it knocked me down to 183. So I lost about 12 pounds on, on that um, with COVID. And so it knocked me down to 183. And so the way I look at it right now, this cruise has really just helped me put back on the weight that I lost. It does seem to be leaner weight. So maybe there was some recomp in that process because I still have six very chiseled visible abs at 191 pounds in the morning. So I'm thinking that I'm about 191, still hovering around that 10% body fat range. So I'm very, very happy about that. Maybe if I was willing to run this, this cruise for a longer period of time, I could maintain those gains. 
I don't know. I'm not going to find out because I've got a blast. I got my next blast coming up very soon. Another thing that I wanted to point out, I get a lot of guys in, uh, you know, contacting me personally or that people are asking, you know, why don't you talk about your sources? Obviously, that's not something that I can handle on YouTube and I'm, it's not something that I really like to talk about at all for a number of reasons. But a couple of you guys stumbled across some of my posts on MesoRx. So I'm just going to say this for anyone who's curious. My username on MesoRx, which is a steroid forum, is Hydrilla Gorilla. That's a fishing term. I'll put it in the description or something so you guys can spell it. If you look up, if you look me up on MesoRx on those boards and you look at where I post, that will probably give you all of the information you need. Some guys have already found me on there and said that they like the videos and I appreciate you guys giving that nod on that forum. So for those of you who are curious, find me on MesoRx and maybe you'll get some of the information that you've been looking for. Um, if you haven't already used that forum, it's a phenomenal forum. There's a volume, there's just a wealth of information there. The guys are very harsh on each other. It's kind of a no holds bar kind of thing. It's really humorous to read if nothing else and there's a lot of really good data that can point you in the direction of the information that you are looking for. So check out the MesoRx forums and as I said in the beginning, I think this is probably going to be my last video going into the HRT with Trend topic. So to wrap it all up, for the past eight to nine weeks, I've been running 200 milligrams of Test E, 50 milligrams of Trenbolone E, and during that period of time, I was able to recover basically all of my, my biomarkers uh, with, the, you know, with the 130 blood pressure being a little bit of an outlier. I maintained the vast majority of my strength in the gym. I set multiple PRs during this cruise. I'm having sex with my wife two times a day, every single day. There has been zero backpedaling on the sexual aggression or the sexual appetite. I can still kill two hour workouts in the gym with no problem. My recovery has been on point. Everything has been great. I've maintained a lot of the trend look, the hardness, the vascularity, obviously not on par with a full blown blast, but for the fact that I've been able to maintain all of those positives while letting my body apparently rest enough that the, the, overwhelming, the, uh, the overwhelming number of the biomarkers are back in line and I was able to put back on some weight that I lost, it is pretty fucking conclusive, I would say, that this is a godly fucking cruise. People talk about Trinblown being the god compound. I could not agree more. And I think my data is very conclusive that one, Trinblown is not hepatoxic, and two, in low doses, it is more effective and safer than high dose testosterone. So, that being said, I have to always clarify. This is not an endorsement of any type of illegal drug or substance. Do not break the law in your country. This is not medical advice. Do not listen to anything I am telling you. This is for entertainment and informational purposes only. I have chosen in my life to be a guinea pig and do the hard work for you. So I am doing experiments with my body to see what will happen so that hopefully that information will be informational only. Do not follow what I'm doing. I probably have unbelievably elite genetics like all of these big name guys who don't have to take that much shit to be giants and it probably won't work for you anyway. So hopefully this has been informative. Stay tuned. I've got a lot of videos coming up. I decided I'm going to make a video about the uh, interview that, that uh, Greg Doucette did with uh, Jay Cutler just because it really did fucking break my heart to see that and I think, the, I think that my takedown of that will be valuable to the community. And again, uh, I do have an upcoming blast coming relatively, uh, relatively shortly, so you should see more data on that coming up soon. Uh, follow me on Instagram. Check me out on MesoRx. Follow all the shit, the bells, the clicks, the fucking everything. Comments in the section below. And as always, we'll see you on the next one.